Well, welcome to our service today. We want to thank, of course, firstly, let's thank everybody in the house for being here today. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And thank you uh, in Corpus Christi, Texas, and the Coastal Bend, and our brothers and sisters from all through Asia. We love you so much. And uh, we want you to know how much we really appreciate you joining us. And we have been partners for a long time, as well as our brothers in Africa on on the uh, west coast, east coast of Africa, and even central Africa. We want to thank you uh, for joining us today. Thank you, our brothers and sisters in Eastern Europe and Western Europe. We want to thank all of you for joining us today here in North America, Central America, South America, Australia, and the islands of the sea. We want to thank you for t- tuning in. So the Bible teaches us, and I love it when the psalmist says, um, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He, I, I, I was also I love the psalmist when he said that uh, he wanted, he was uh, eager or ready to worship the Lord. And he said in one place, our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. I, I, I remember him saying that we should enter his courts uh, with thanksgiving, uh, uh, enter his uh, courts with thanksgiving. His gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. I, I'm, I'm grateful to the psalmist for the way he speaks to us. And sometimes when I get older, as I get older, I realize that he said it. I don't always know where he said it, but I do realize he said it. But this is what I do know. The Lord is with you and he's with me. He's with us wherever we go. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And so let us give glory to the Lord. And I'm going to ask all of our brothers and sisters in the sanctuary to stand with us. We give glory to the Lord. And as we believe every word of God, wherever we are, we believe every word of God. So let us pray. Father, thank you so much for the brothers and the sisters in this house. And we're going to all start out together praising you and worshiping you and giving glory and honor to you. We want to thank you and and bless your name. Uh, You are are a good God. You've always been with us. As, as, as As David says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And so, Lord, you are also the strength of our life. Of whom shall we be afraid? We thank you that whenever our enemies have come against us, they've always stumbled. They've always fallen. So we bless you in Jesus' name and bless this house. Amen. Thank you, Brother James. Thank you. Take it away. Amen. Come on, everybody. It's time to give him some praise in the house. Can we lift our voice? Let's give him some praise. Here we go. Break down every wall We'll watch the giant 
praise you. Oh, 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 here we go, here we go. Say, come on. Put your hands together now. Yeah. This is what living looks like, amen. Celebrating and praising our Lord and giving him a praise offering that is amazing. Can somebody shout his name, Jesus? Come on. Here we go. It goes like this. Cause this is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. Let me hear you sing. This is what, come on. This is what freedom, this is what heaven, that's right, come on. This is what living looks like. Yeah! This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, everybody say. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. You cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With our creation cry, God, we praise you. Come on, somebody, give him one more praise offering where you're at. Amen. Hallelujah. There is no fear, cause I believe. There is no doubt, cause I have seen. Your faithfulness, my fortress, over and over. I have a hope found in your name. I have a strength found in your grace, your faithfulness. My fortress over and over. Let's sing that again. I have no hope because I believe there is no doubt because I have seen your faithfulness. My fortress. Over and over, I have, I have a hope found in your name. I have a strength found in your grace, your faithfulness, my fortress. Over and over. Famous 
the God of the, who exceeds our expectations God and God as you speak there's nothing that can stop your word oh God we pour ourselves out as a living sacrifice before you God have your way have your way oh God have your way hey yeah yeah God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, more than we ask or think, Lord, you will never fail. Your name is powerful, your words unstoppable, all things are possible in you, God. God of abundantly, more than we ask or think, Lord, you will never fail. Your name is powerful, your words unstoppable, all things are possible. In you, God of exceedingly, God of that's who you are, God. thank you God we thank you 
that we serve the God of Daniel. Oh God, we bring back to remembrance of who you are. When your servant was in the lion's den, it looked hopeless, like no way out. But he believed, oh God, he believed. And he declared, you are the God who exceeds, and the God who does abundantly more than we ask or think. That's who you are, God. And your name is powerful. And once you speak, God, your word's unstoppable. There's no one or nothing that can stop your word from fulfilling its purpose. So we sing, God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, more than we ask or think, Lord, you will never fail. Your name is powerful. Your words unstoppable. All things are possible. In declare God, God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, more than we ask or think. Lord, you will never. Oh, your name is powerful. Your words unstoppable. All things are possible In you Make way, make way through the waters Walk me through the fire Do what you are famous for What you are famous for Shut the mouths of lions Bring dry bones to life And do what you are famous for What you are famous for Make way through the waters Walk me through the fire Do what you are famous for What you are famous for Shut the mouths of lions Bring drop bones to life And do what you are famous for What you are famous for Father, because we know what you have done. Father, we believe in you because we know what you are doing. Father, we believe in you because we know what you're going to do. Your word promises, Father God, that you're never going to fail us. You're never going to leave us nor forsake us, Father God. Your plans are to prosper us, Father God. And not just wealth, Lord. That's not the point. It's to prosper us in Christ. It's to prosper us in Jesus. And so I ask, Father God, Lord, that you move in this place, God, and not let us stay in one spot. Let us not get complacent. Let us not be sedentary. can't stay in the same place, Lord. We gotta go where you're going, God. We gotta move. Cause I can't stay here asleep to how you're moving. I can't stay here complacent anymore. I can't stay here My heart's full of longing I can't stay here 
Cause I know what I'm made for You're breathing new life Into dry bones And I hear the echoes The sound of heaven's song Your spirit's calling me I know it's time to go and I can't stay here anymore. The 
sound of heaven's song, your spirit's calling me. I go inside to go and I can't stay here anymore. I can't stay here anymore. I can't stay here anymore. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We just want to give you praise right now, God. You are the God of life. You are the God of victory, of joy, of love, of peace, of strength. Hallelujah. Of deliverance. Oh, we just want to love you, Lord. We just want to say we love you right now. We love you, Lord. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, as we come to you right now in prayer, Father, we just, Father, we acknowledge that, Lord, we are in this season that we celebrate that Jesus came to earth as a man. But Lord, we know the reality, Father, goes far beyond that. And so, Lord, it is in his name, in the name of the one who came, who lived, who died and rose again, that, Lord, we come to you right now. In the reality, Lord God, of knowing how loved we are. Because we have come into relationship with you, and you said to come boldly to the throne of grace. So, Lord, we just want to pray right now as we come together in this one place and also online, Lord God. We just want to lift up our request to you, knowing that, Lord, you hear, that you listen, that you care. And that, God, that you are able to move and to change hearts, to change circumstances. And so, Lord, we come to you in faith. And, Lord, I want to lift up, Father God, Lori, Lord God, as she is recovering from her surgery. Father, we also want to lift up Dr. Peter Mensa as he is recovering from a stroke. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we know that, Lord, you are able. So we speak life to our brother Peter. We speak life to Lori. We speak restoration to their bodies and to their hearts and to all of their internal organs in Jesus' name. Father, we also want to pray, Father, for uh, healing from arthritis, pain, Father. Um, for Adi, Father, also, Lord God, who is having a baby. Lord, we just pray, God, everything will go smoothly in Jesus' name. We pray against no complications in Jesus' name. We pray that no weapon, no complications formed against her will prosper. We pray, God, for Adi. We pray for uh, baby Gracia. Lord, we just thank you that all will be well in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Father, we want to pray, Father, Lord, also for Juan who has a tumor. Father, I thank you, God, that tumor is a name and it must bow to the name of Jesus. And so we just curse that tumor and we command it to shrink in the name of Jesus. Wherever Juan is, Lord, you know who he is, where he is. And Father, we just pray your healing touch over him right now in Jesus' name, Father. I pray that when he goes back to the doctors, that it will be smaller and smaller. And that, Lord, that God, in Jesus' name, if, if Father God, if you want to show off, Lord, let it be gone. For your glory, Lord, for your glory, in Jesus' name, Father. We also want to pray for Sam, who is having surgery, Lord God, tomorrow. Father, we just pray that everything will go well with his surgery, in Jesus' name. Again, we rebuke and we pray against any complications. We just pray that everything will go smooth, be with the doctors, be with the nurses and the staff. And we pray your peace over Sam and your peace over his family. That in Jesus' name, Lord, that you are working. And Lord, we pray, Father, also for Betty, God, who is recovering from a fall. Lord, a broken shoulder, Father, also recovering from a stroke. Lord, we just pray life, health, and healing, Father, over her body. We pray, Father, for your peace, Father. We pray for restoration and healing in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Give her your peace, Lord. Let her know that you are there with her, God, in this recovery, God, that you are giving her daily strength, God, to, to get better every day in Jesus' name. Father, we also want to pray, Father, for uh, the, the family, God, Susie's family, Lord God. She uh, passed away. Lord, we just pray, Father, for comfort for this family. Lord, she was killed while crossing the street. 
I was hit by a truck. And so, Father, we just pray for your comfort over the family. Lord, to have an unexpected loss like this is so hard. But, Lord, I thank you, God, that, Lord, you are there with them. And, that God, that you will hold them, Father, that you will comfort them in Jesus' name. Let them know, Lord, that you are, Father God, walking this out with them. That when they hurt, that, Lord, you hurt. And that, God, that you see every tear, Father, you, you hear every cry. And that, Lord, you, Father, want to be the God of all comfort for them. And so, Lord, I pray that for them. And I pray for their family. I pray, Father, for their loved ones. I pray for the church family that knows them. That, Lord, that, that God, their hearts will be turned towards you. Because you are near the brokenhearted. And, Lord, I just want to pray for all others, God, that are grieving loved ones during this season, Father, that the holidays sometimes can be a very hard time. I pray, God, that you will comfort their hearts, that you will hold them dear, Father, that they will know that you are with them, that even in their loss and even in their pain, that, Lord, that you can still give them peace, that you can still give them strength, that you can still give them a sense of joy because we have a hope in Christ that, Lord, is beyond this life, that it goes into the next. And so, Father, we just thank you, God, for hope and for restoration. Father, we pray for Jennifer, Lord God, um, that Lord, she just wants to pray against the negativity in her life. She is struggling. And so, Father, we just pray, Father, also for her, that God, that you will help her to be strong, that Lord, you will help her, Father, to look to you and Father, uh, for her family and friends. Father, we want to pray, Father, uh, for James and Rachel, Lord, who are asking for clarity. Father, we just pray, Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of truth lead them guide them to all truth show them father what you have for them lord give them those next steps scripture tells us that the, the steps of the righteous are ordered by the lord so order their steps god in jesus name and father we want to pray father for all of these lord god that we bring to you father we pray father for norman father um, we pray father who is also recovering from surgery father we pray father for elsie father uh, against neck pain we pray for healing. We pray for Shirley in Jesus' name against this infection in the name in her lungs. We pray, Lord God, deliver her from that infection completely in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for Candace, for Luis, for Janelle, for Jasmine, for Ricky, for Roy, for Shirley, for Franz, Lord God. I heard a praise report this morning. Thank you, Lord, for getting him out of the ICU. Thank you, Jesus. We pray for Duncan and Visante. We pray for the Dalton family, Lord, that you will continue to comfort them. In Jesus' name. Lord, we're just so grateful to you. We're so grateful to you. Lord, we just thank you that you hear our prayers. And Lord, you answer them. And we just thank you right now for the praise reports that are coming. Believe that a praise report is coming. Believe that things will get better. Believe and trust that God is with you, that he is walking you through, and that there is another side to this season. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. In your Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Before Sister Jadira comes up, I just want to share a few praise reports because we just prayed, saints. And we're believing God to answer. We're believing God to work. And so I just want to encourage our faith because the Lord works all the time. All the time. And so uh, here is a praise report um, from Eloise who had a stroke on Tuesday morning with a blood clot on the brain. And God brought her home on Friday evening. Isn't that awesome? Woo! And she's sitting here. Woo! She's right there. Thank you, Jesus. A walking testimony. Oh, right here. Sister, God bless you. Our God is good. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our days are in his hands, amen? Hallelujah. Well, I want to also give some pr other praise reports. Um, next, I just we just want to praise God. Sister James and, 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 and Sister Barbara, I mean, Brother James and Sister Barbara want to give God praise because Isaiah is graduating this Friday. Hallelujah. 
Now, this part is supposed to be a praise, but I'm not sure if it's a praise. He's accepted a job already, y'all. But he's going to Houston. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're so happy for you, Isaiah. That is amazing. God bless you. We all know you're an amazing young man that loves Jesus and the favor of God is on you and with you. And may he go with you to Houston. Hallelujah. And then we have another praise. So how many of them? We, we need to give God praise when God does something in our family. Amen. For our children, for our grandchildren, for our friends, our sisters and brothers in Christ. Hallelujah. And we need to celebrate their accomplishments, and which is what we're doing right now. So we also want to recognize the accomplishment of the Flower Bluff Hornet football team, band, cheerleading, and string line programs. Because our very own Darius Powell is a sophomore, and he plays the trumpet for the band. All right, so he is going now. They've advanced, and they're going on Friday to San Antonio. And the winner advances to the state championship. All right, Darius, you go to your horn for Jesus. Amen. And for the Hornets, I guess. Yes. James is a bluff rat, so he's like, oh, yeah, go Hornets. Amen. Sister Jadira. Feasting on weakness. As a child, I began learning not to fear in the biblical sense based on the things I went through. I grew up parent dependent. My father and mother were always there to protect me. It was through their love and protection that I began learning not to fear. All believers have been on this journey and are now at various levels in this process. Many of those who have caused hurt to others and appeared to be strong are not at all strong and hurt others because of fear. Those who hurt, injure, even incarcerate others do it because of fear. Fear is embedded in almost every aspect of life. In the Psalms, there are many verses referencing fear. The psalmist often reminded himself not to fear. Many who would quickly say, I'm not fearful, are truly the fearful, not fearless. God is fearless. His holy angels are also fearless. Everyone and everything else is fearful, including the man who takes matters into his own hands, the lion in the forest, even demons. James 2.19 tells us, you believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Also, Satan is fearful. Strong governments are fearful. And those who resist and fight against them are fearful. This world system is fear-based. God has delivered us and is delivering us from fear. Many people who seem to be very strong are not, whether they are the hero in our movies who always rescues people in trouble or the person who straps weaponry all over their bodies and goes out and kills others. This is not strength. This is not God's way. God's way is for when I am weak, then I am strong. When we are weak in ourselves, we are then positioned to see Christ's strength. For example, when one fasts, abstaining from food, his body becomes weak. His spiritual strength comes from the weakness experienced during fasting. The body is weak. Nevertheless, the spirit man has been made strong. Spiritual nourishment is a need, just as the physical body needs natural food. 
to become strong spiritually, our spirit must be fed by hearing and receiving the word of God, worshiping, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, and by living out the principles of God's word. We do not prove biblical strength by what we are able to do against others, but by our ability to undergo what others do to us. The things of God are often missed because they are antithetical to this world. When I am weak, then I am strong. We tend to miss God happenings because we often look in the wrong places, in the wrong direction. Explore with me some God happenings recorded by the writer of Hebrews. He says, Time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again. We hate human weakness because of how it makes us feel, how it makes us look in the eyes of others. We want to be humble. We want to be like the brothers and sisters in the stories above. We want to be like Jesus until we experience what it truly feels like to be despised, rejected, and the off-scouring of men. Humility, Christ's strength, comes at a costly price, one we are willing to pay until it cost us our self-worth, our self-image. We must always remember that Christ's image is the one that we now bear and is of much greater value than the value of our self-image. Paul says, but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. When one looks in the mirror, he sees an exact image of himself. It is not like looking at a person facing you where your right is to their left and their left is facing your right. But Paul says that with unveiled face, we behold as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord being transformed into the same image by the spirit of the Lord. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This phrase is a cornerstone of Christian growth, yet, like our Savior, it is indeed rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious. Growing together, Pastor Don. I'm ready for deeper. I'm ready for furious blood. I'm ready for glory. I'm ready for kingdom come. I'm ready for deeper. I'm ready for furious blood. I'm ready for glory. I'm ready for kingdom come. You're breathing new life into troubles. I hear the echo, the sound of heaven's song. Your spirit's calling me. I know the time to go and I can stay here anymore. I can stay here anymore. I can stay here anymore. Amen, amen, and amen. How many are ready to move with the, what the Lord's doing? Amen. 
want to follow him. Hallelujah. He knows where he's going a lot better than we do. Amen. Praise God. Let us trust him. Well, saints, this morning, I just want to greet you all. My name is Rochelle Rocha Roots, and I am so glad that you're in the house of God here with us at Corpus Christi Christian Fellowship. And for those joining us online, thank you so much for joining us as well. So I just want to know really quick, do we have any new guests in the house today? If you can just briefly raise your hand. All right. Welcome. God bless you. If you'll keep your hand up for just a second for one of our ushers to find you. They have a guest card for you to fill out, and then they also have a gift for you. We also have another uh, brother. Thank you so much for joining us over there in the middle. God bless you. And then we have one over here in the back as well. God bless you guys. Did I miss anybody over here? I just want to make sure I don't miss anybody. All right. Well, great. Welcome to the fellowship, or as uh, Albert likes to say, welcome home. <laughs> We are a family here, and uh, I pray that you already have sensed the love of God for you. Um, we have that and so much more. The Lord has been so good to us at the fellowship. Um, we love our pastors. We love our family. We love what the Lord is doing in our church and through our church, not just locally, but also around the world. And so, saints, if we'll just stand up briefly, let us greet one another and give each other a wave. Thank you all so much for coming and being here with us. Welcome, welcome. Y'all look great in the house of the Lord. Amen, amen. Well, bless you, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this Sunday morning. We, we now have a few announcements for us. So I'm going to ask you guys to please uh, turn your eyes to the screen. Thank you. Hello, Fellowship family. What an amazing day here at the Fellowship. I'm Jennifer, and here are some important announcements. Worship services here at the Fellowship are always special during the month of December. Please make sure to join us for every service during December as we celebrate Jesus during this upcoming Holy season. And please make sure to invite someone. Please join us for our next congregational meeting, Saturday, December the 11th at 9 a.m. We will share important and pertinent information about all that is happening here at the Fellowship. Your effort in attending will be most appreciated. We look forward to seeing you there. The Fellowship will host a vaccination clinic against the COVID-19 virus Saturday, December the 11th from 8 to 11 a.m. in the MWC classroom. Now this service is offered to you, our members, along with everyone in our community. Please share this information with your friends and family. Calling all men of the Fellowship, our monthly men's meeting is Saturday, December the 18th. Come at 8.30 to enjoy a hearty breakfast and a time of fellowship. Expect a great word beginning promptly at 9 a.m. Now all men are invited and encouraged to attend. Come and please invite someone. The food pantry will distribute food Saturday, December the 18th from noon to 1.30 p.m. The food pantry serves families in need and the 78412, the 78413, and the 78414 zip code areas, along with our fellowship families. If you live in these areas, or you are in need, or you know someone in need, we invite you to come out Saturday, December the 18th. If you would like to be water baptized, please call the church office to sign up. We have taken precautions to ensure everyone's safety, so we will only baptize one individual or one family group at a time on Sundays during the 12.30 p.m. service. Now, we would like you to hear more about our TFI Symposium. After the video, we will return to our worship service. Thank you, and God bless you. My name is Susan Liberto. I'm standing here today because the Christ-centered message changed my life. It's this message that the Fellowship International takes to the nations, and this message brings change everywhere it's preached. In over 40 nations are now with TFI, partnering with us, committing to preach a Christ-centered message and to live a Christ-centered lifestyle. I want to take this opportunity to invite you and our TFI family around the world 
our TFI stateside friends and supporters to come together in February for our annual TFI Symposium. God gathers us each year to come together to proclaim His Son, Jesus Christ, and to hear what He's saying to His church in this day and hour. I invite you to join us. first week of February. So please register online at TFI Symposium 2022.com. Or you can also register in person starting today. All right. So registration is open. So please uh, join us in, here in the back of the foyer uh, as you're heading out this uh, morning and you can register online or in person here and know that the registration is free. But we always ask our participants to register because there are some other things that we kind of prepare for. Um, so that's where the numbers are helpful but i just encourage you to register amen well saints it is now time to continue our worship to the lord with our giving amen so let us worship the lord through our giving him back what he has given us um, and so if you need a an envelope please raise your hand our ushers are ready to hand those out to you, um, you there are three ways to give here at the fellowship um, in person by cash check or envelope and then also we have our out of debt covenant boxes if you want to give there it goes directly to the depth of the house and uh, also a promise of the Lord that if you will give that he will get your house out of debt you can also give online for those joining us online at cccfellowship.com forward slash give or by text at three Three six one three eight six two five six five. All right. Well, I'm going to pray, and then after that, I'm going to leave you in the hands of the ushers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are just so grateful today, Lord. Thank God we get to be in your house. We get to be in your presence with our family. And Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord. How good you have been to us, Lord. We just had Thanksgiving, Lord, and we were able to count our blessings and so lord i just pray that lord you will continue lord to bless your people continue to provide every need according to your riches and glory by christ jesus and that lord out of grateful hearts god we give back father our tithes our offerings and so lord i just pray bless your people i pray and provide every need in every home in every life in jesus name amen i should see you can come forward
beautiful counselor. His name shall be everlasting Father. His name shall be Prince of Peace, mighty God. His name shall be Thank you, Lord God. Amazing. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the first, in the first service, I kind of gave them a, a little bit of rebuke. It was so powerful. I, it, just, it was just so powerful. I thought at one juncture, Brother James, of course, all during the worship, but I thought I was going to jump out of my seat in that first service and then just embarrass all of y'all. I came from a church of full expression, and uh, some of you may, you may not have done that, you know, but I came from a church where if people felt something, they said something. And, uh, I mean, sometimes we, we didn't want our, our fellow students to go to church with us because we didn't know what they were going to say. And, and, but I, I was almost one of them this morning and almost this service. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you all, each one of you. Each one of you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I told them in the first service, I was thinking Pastor Jackson had the same imagery. They just said that and just blew us up, messed us up, and then just walked off the stage. <laughs> they reminded both of us of Stephen Curry coming down that center line, throwing up a three-pointer and walking like he hadn't done anything. But it was amazing. And this is amazing that God would call us into this. It's amazing that God would do that. Thank you, Jesus. You know, there are, there are people who don't know God, and for many, many, many centuries, uh, many of our, if you're not Jewish, many of our ancestors never knew God. We're going to talk about the jurisdiction one of these days and talk about how, what they went through to bring us this. This is amazing. And I, I, I got it mostly by revelation from the Holy Spirit as I was in this sanctuary one day. It was not only the good things they did, it was even the, the things they suffered and the things that were exposed in all humankind through them. It was our, all of our problem. And uh, God used them. And that's why he, but he's going to do some greater things for them in, in some days to come. I, I want to just jump, sort of jump into the word. You ever, we need a better expression than jumping into the word. So, so I'll search my dictionary and find a better word. But before I do that, let me say a couple of things. 
I want to thank Sister Becky and Sister Marjorie. Are you still here? You, one of you ladies here? I guess they just came at 8.30 and went on back home. That's the fish and something. But they, they're, the, <laughs> oh, they're the ones who, who did all of these beautiful arrangements. These, and Sister Becky and Sister Marjorie and Sister Carmen. Where is Sister Carmen? Oh, yes. Sister Carmen, were you a part of this also? You're a part of everything. You, you make everything look good. It's like you went to a Ph.D. program for that stuff. You, you, you're always doing something. You and Brother Manuel and making sure that we have uh, the communion elements to serve. You've done that for way, 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 way back. And I want to thank you. You did it when you had to drive in from way out there in Petronila. I want to thank you for that. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. And uh, quickly, Sister Susan uh, Liberto was doing the announcement there. Um, who is our missions director for the CCCF and for the Tel- Fellowship International. Um, also, uh, I came up with the idea. We, we actually talked about it years, for years and years. But she, uh, we had an internship program. And it, when we don't mention things, it's not like we don't care. It's they, they, they hand the ball off to me. And uh, sometimes, you know, I'm like old Leroy, who was being beat up every time he took the ball from the quarterback. Those linebackers were beating him up so badly. He said one time, uh, he, he, the coach said, give Leroy the ball up the middle. And, and the quarterback kept it. He said, give Leroy the ball uh, of right, right tackle. And the quarterback kept the ball. So the coach shouted, what's wrong? I said, give Leroy the ball. He said, well, Leroy said he doesn't want the ball. So sometimes it's like that in ministry, right? But, uh, <laughs> but I, I just want to say that thank all you interns. Anybody here went through our intern program? Would you, would you stand up for it? Uh, they, they went through a, an internship program, and, and it was amazing, these guys, you know, giving of their time and energy back there. Let's give them all a big hand. Thank you. They're, they're all standing. Thank you. And, and we'll do something a little, little more appropriate, too, and just allow you and have you, uh, you know, say some things to our uh, church. We're going to go over a little bit of time. I want to let you know already. You know, uh, what happens is in, in churches, you know this by now, if you've been in the Lord any time, it doesn't matter how long you have church service. You know, it's always the pastor's fault. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody can do everything they want to give pastor 15 minutes. Say, Why do y'all go over? Say, pastor preached too long. <laughs> I want to talk about the lifestyle of sons. The lifestyle of sons. And uh, when we talk about lifestyle, we talk about the way a person lives or the way a group lives. I mean, how do you live? Uh, In the family I grew up in, we had a lifestyle of, of, of holiness. And so whether we were really holy or not, we had to act like it. Uh, it was, it, you know, because there was something for you if you didn't. And, and so, but, but what we want to do here is have a lifestyle of portraying sons of God, being sons of God, showing the whole world who God is or who through Jesus is through us. We have to do that through us. Uh, Jesus has told us we're the light of the world, we're the city on the hill. And a lot of us, I guess, think that it's too formidable to be the light on the hill. So we say America is, right? You know, we say America is the shining city on the hill. Actually, it's the church. And so we are th- what God has put forth uh, to show people who he is, who Jesus is. So I may say some things that kind of conflict with the way you are thinking. And uh, if I don't do that, then I've not done preaching well enough. And uh, as a matter of fact, I learned a long time ago, if I go to church uh, whenever I go and uh, the, uh, the pastor never or the speaker never says anything that corrects me, he must not be preaching the gospel. Wow. Right. And so and so we're going to probably say some things you may disagree with. I would like to ask you, should you disagree with anything I ever say? Examine it in the scripture. Because I never mean to say anything that is not right. So I examine it in the scripture. Don't ever go out of here saying, well, I don't, I don't believe that. And then keep being where you are. You, you know, you, one, of the, one of the judgments of God, I really love this when Pastor Joel Pettit b- brought this out so clearly. Uh, maybe one of the first, uh, maybe the first time he preached here one or two times. He said, uh, the, the judgment of God is 
uh, after so long a time, God giving you what you want. And, and that was just so powerful to me. I thought, that is so right. Can you imagine God giving you what you want? You know, when you want those things outside of God, I'm saying. You want those things that come from you. And so uh, we don't want that kind of judgment. God found finally just saying, you can have it. People who are in hell, he's going to say, okay, you can have it. I've worked with you 70, 80 years and trying to uh, convince you can have it. Uh, does that make you tremble? I mean, it makes me tremble. Let me talk a little bit about lifestyle, uh, the lifestyle of sons. And we want to look at Galatians chapter 3, uh, verse, verse 26. We will start. <clears throat> this is what. Paul says to the Galatians, he's talking to primarily Gentiles. There are some Jewish believers there, uh, but he's talking primarily to Gentiles. He says, for you are all sons. He uses the word we us. You are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. This is just so huge for me, just so big for, uh, for Paul to say something like that. You are all sons. You're all we us. You're all capable of being an integral part in the family business. Amen. You are, you know, the family business. The kingdom of God is the family business. And, and so he's saying you are sons. Okay. I'm going to preach anyway. Yeah, I'm going to preach anyway. It doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, I'm going to probably throw this thing away. Don't understand. Did I get it off, Brother Jane? No, you're fine. I gave you a different mic. Okay. Okay. Let me get it. You know, um, I think it was uh, when Moses was at the Red Sea, the Lord told him, to, uh, uh, he said these words, he says, the, the Egyptians like who are pursuing you, you will see no more forever. Esto? <laughs> you will see no more forever. <laughs> este? You will see no more forever. <laughs> all right, Let, let's go back to my preaching. Verse 26, for you are all sons, we are of God through faith in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus. And so Paul then goes on to say, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. I want you to really get hold of this. He is calling you now sons of God. The same word he uses for Jesus He's calling you sons of God. And as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And when Pastor Bert takes people in the back of the air in our baptistry and he takes them under the water, he, he baptizes them. What we want to do is give you, get you fully dunked under. And we're not trying to talk about anything else, any sponge on you or sprinkle on you. We're not getting into that. We're just saying uh, baptizo has to do with immersion. And so we're putting them under so that you get a clear picture of what happens to you in Christ. So you get all under. There's no way that you can go under that and come up dry. There's no way. So we put you in Christ. There's no way you can be baptized into Christ and not coming not, and getting out, not being clothed with Christ. So Paul wants us to grasp this idea. And, and through faith in him, this causes us or makes us sons. He says, you, for as many as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Then he brings us an amazing conclusion, and there, there's controversy in all of these things. The reason there is controversy is because a lot of times we just don't want to accept what God is saying. Or sometimes we have had so much input into something that we want something out of it. For example, if you invest whatever amount of money you were investing into a, a stock, if that stock goes down, you don't keep putting money in it because you want to get your other money out. You know, so sometimes with our ideas and our learning, we keep putting more into it, thinking that we're going to get a different result. 
and we're not going to get a different result. So Paul tells us very clearly that, that because of Jesus Christ, there has been an, a huge change in, in the world and, and all the nations who did not know uh, Jesus. They know God through Jesus. So there's been a great change. And so we, uh, as many of us have, as were baptized into Christ have now put on Christ. So like I've got on these clothes, you don't see what I am under there because I've got on these clothes. Or you, you don't see the old man because now Christ has made all things new. And, and it doesn't matter about your feelings. You know, sometimes you bring your feelings into everything. And so you, we just always, though, I don't feel, I don't feel, this a feel, feel. Well, let's just stop it and, and believe what God says, and then we will have what God has said. Believe what God says, and you will have what God said. But if you keep believing what you feel and what, I don't feel, I don't feel. Well, that's not the Scripture. So this is what he concludes. He says, Paul concludes this, there is neither Jew nor Greek, or there's neither Jew nor nor Gentile. And what he is talking about is this difference we always want to make. Because if I can make you a little bit less than me, I can feel more superior and better than you. So this is really what he is talking about. He doesn't mean that there are not Jewish people or Gentile people, but he is talking about these crazy comparisons that we generally make. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. So he's, he's showing you there's just no racial distinction anymore. And just look around. You're so amazing. You're so beautiful. It's so beautiful when you really look at what God has done. And he's not finished doing it. There's, there's more to be done. And there's more to be done by you because we, uh, John saw a huge multitude which nobody could number. And they were coming out of every nation, every kindred, every tribe, every language. They were coming uh, with, with songs going to Zion. They were people that Jesus had redeemed by his blood. And this is what God is doing. This is the tapestry, an example of the tapestry God wants. Not more of that stuff that we've learned in the world. Now notice what he says. So there's, there's neither slave nor free. So it's, so it's not any socioeconomic uh, differences that God is looking for. He's not looking for that stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're sitting here with $50 million or you're sitting here with $50. I mean, the 50 million doesn't make you better than the person with 50. But, but the 50 million doesn't make you worse. The, the, the guy with 50 is not more holy than you because he has 50. Did you, did you see how beautiful God is? And he has done all this through Jesus. And he's not finished. He says, there's neither male nor female. And this is a controversial thing that now people of God say, well, I can't talk about it because I may offend somebody. May I be straight up with you? I don't want to offend anyone. But if you're offended with the truth, that's your problem. That's right. <laughs> it's not my problem. I'm not going to try to fix the gospel so you'll be comfortable. Sometimes the gospel comes so you will be uncomfortable. The Bible talks about Moab, and I haven't read it recently, but it says Moab's uh, was just sitting on a leash or just had, had been undisturbed sitting on a dregs. You know, have you ever had water in the country and you, you get it, got it from the hydrant? Or, or we had a little hydrant, a faucet, or, and, but it came from a deep well. A little turn, a little faucet came out. Or whether you put the little bucket down there and drew, drew it up. And if you let the water sit a while, because in East Texas where I came from, there would be all the minerals were in the water and there would be dregs under the bottom. A little, little se sediment. Sediment. It was rust under there. And uh, Moab was like that. No, nobody had ever, she hadn't been dealt with. He said, so her, her smell, her taste was still there because she hadn't been poured out and poured out and poured out. And so if the gospel doesn't cause you to, to be disturbed, it hasn't been preached. The gospel has caused me to squirm on my seat. The gospel, even when I was preaching sometimes, I'm preaching, I said, and I would say under breath, that's not fair, Lord. I've done that before. So, so he's showing us, he says, neither male nor female. He's not saying it's all right for you to determine your, gen your gender. It's all right for you to say you are this and you are that when, when something else happened at birth for you. 
He's not saying, and he's not even dealing with that. But it's still not all right for us to compromise the word of God. Here he says there's neither male nor female. He's, he, female. He is saying you don't come into the kingdom of God and decide who's going to be on the, on the top, who's going to be at the bottom rung of the ladder, and who's going to be at the top. Well, all you women, we want you to help us uh, prepare the communion, but we won't let you serve it. Oh, you can help us uh, type our messages, but you can't preach it. That's what God is talking about. And in this church, it will never be. It will not be allowed as long as I'm pastor. And anybody else comes in here as pastor and they want to break, break that rule, you, you said, adios. Huh? I was going to say another term, but sometimes my wife told me I was talking about Charles one day, and I was, you know, still trying to use some Spanish. I'm, I do it pretty good when I'm by myself with everybody, because if, if I mess up, they correct me. If, if, if uh, I messed up with you before, I can't correct all y'all. Do you know what he said? So she told me one day I was calling Charles my associate. I thought I was saying mi asociado. And, uh, and so my assist, no, asistente, mi asistente. And, and so, so she said, stay away from those ate words. Stay away from those ate words. I grew up in the barrio, and you want to stay away from all the ate words. <laughs> so, so one day, screw me over everybody. Screw me. School me. So what he's saying here is that, is that there are no gender distinctions. A man is not better than a woman. Because in the last days, God pours out his spirit on all flesh. Sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. And we're going to be a lot better when we have Jew, uh, Jewish and Gentiles and, and sons and daughters doing the work of God. That's when we'll really see the power of God. And what you have seen here, even this morning, is some of our young shepherds who are women. Amen, somebody. And then he goes on to say, for you are all one in Christ Jesus, M male and female, Jew and Greek, slave and free. You're all one in Christ Jesus. And he says, and if you are Christ's or if you belong to Christ or since you belong to Christ or for as much as you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. This is what this is so big. What he is saying is when God told Abraham that you are, you, are, you are the father of many nations, and I'm going to bless every family of the earth through you. He says he was talking about one person through Jesus Christ, and he says you are all now sons or seed of Abraham, or sons of Abraham, and you are heirs according to the promise. This is so big. So everything that God promised Abraham, the whole world, he says, you are an heir. You're in the will. You're in the will. Guys, you're in the will. Sometimes, sometimes when I, I'm reading these things and God is giving them to me, I'm going like, good, goodly, wiggly. I mean, whoa, Jesus. Am I reading this right? Am I reading this way? Let me just hurry because I've got a, so much more to say. Paul stated that Christ is the seed of Abraham. He's told us that several times in Galatians. He is the seed of Abraham. Because God is not saying, I, I know, yes, we don't want to get kind of caught up, but Jesus is the seed that, that this promise was given. Galatians 3.16 says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say to and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to your seed who is Christ. Therefore, being in Christ makes a believer a part of that seed and heir of the promise to Abraham. This is amazing. And, and he says in Galatians chapter 4, verse 1, he says, Now I say that the heir, and he explains it more fully, he says that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. So what he wants you to know, it's like um, in, in the world, let's say the, the, the Windsor family, they have these kids, and then I, I've watched them grow up, and you've watched them grow up, and they'll have these guardians walking with them. Nope, nope, nope. You know, they, they don't do this, they do that. And those children, he says, they don't differ uh, from, from any 
a, a slave. I mean, they do what they're told. They're, they're, they're put in the right place. He said, they're under the guardians. They're under stewards until the time. Until the time appointed by the Father. And when the time that is appointed by the Father comes, then they have a coming out. And he says, but the next verse, I love this in, in, in Paul's writings. He says, even so we. So, and with as that as we as he had says has said that then he says he compares us even so we when we were children were under bondage were in bondage under the elements of the world we were under the elements of the world but when the fullness of the time had come what had happened God sent his son born of a woman born under the law to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons and so now because of Christ we have been adopted into God's family now that's big because because of Christ in Christ we are adopted into God's family so when you have the spirit you know how I know you're adopted because you have the spirit of God so you now have the spirit of God living in you you are now adopted now ha has anybody in here ever said I am adopted into God's family if you haven't, let's say it now. I am ad adopted in God's family. Come on, say it again. I am adopted in God's family. Let, one more time. I am adopted in God's family. So what that means is you now recognize you are an heir of God. You're, and, and Jesus died to ratify. Listen, he can never unratify it. Can I show you what's impossible? It is impossible for him to ever unratify this amazing covenant. It is impossible for him to say, oh no, uh, they're not adopted. Why? Because it is impossible for God to lie. And so what God wants us to do now is to walk as sons. That is, walk not in arrogance, but walk in knowing. Walk in assurance. Walk in knowing. I, I've often given this example of somebody who knows their love. Now, there are some people, they're not going to know their love if you tell them a thousand times. Because they're just bent on what they know. But this is what, listen. When, 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 when I always tell my granddaughters and my grandson, I got one grandson here and I've got four granddaughters. And my daughter has heard this too. I always let them know how much they love. You know, I don't do that, try to endear myself to them. I'm already there. But I want them to know, if any boy tells you that, 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 that you're pretty, you don't have to be all impressed. Because your granddad has told you all your life. And your dad has told you all your life. I tell our, our young girls here, I said, you, you're so beautiful. I'm not trying to be sweet, trying to be calm, just telling you what you are. So you'll know who you are. And when people really know who they are, they act different. They don't walk with their head all down like they're looking for money on the ground. They walk like somebody. And what God is saying here in, the, in these texts, he says, you walk like you're somebody. You say, well, I, my, my daddy left us. And I know there have been a lot of bad daddies. Some of them, bad mommies, left you, didn't care about you. But God saw you and he picked you up. And he said, baby, I want you. I, I want you. I want you. And, that, and that's how we are living now. We are, we are wanted by God. He has already adopted us. L this is so, so good. I'm, I'm rushing through it. Forgive me. So Paul tells the Galatians, uh, he tells the Colossians, and this is very pertinent to what he's saying to the, to the Galatians in Colossians 2.8. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Don't let anybody cheat you. Don't let anybody take from you what God has already told you about yourself and who you are and now give you something that shines in the world and now you are forsaking God and eternity you are forsaking sonship with God and being a, a, a joint heir with Jesus Christ of the whole universe not just some few local lots here the whole universe is yours the scripture says, all things are yours. 
All things are yours. This is huge. So walk like a son. I don't fight over this local stuff. Don't you? You don't have an obligation to the flesh to fulfill anything in the flesh. And you don't have an obligation to this world except to live like a son of God. Live like a son of God. That's what God wants you to walk like a son of God. Walk like a son of God. Be that son of God. Let me read a few more. In Galatians 4, 9, he says, But now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, Rather, after you are known by God, you know that God knows you, and you know that God has saved you. You know that God has given you his spirit. He says, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? He says, God has freed you. You're sitting here, you're free. Don't bring your stuff here. I mean, if God, God's making a banquet for you. He's making a supper for you. And you bring your little sandwich. That's what it is when you bring your, your, all your stuff, your worldly stuff. And when you look at the condition of, of our nation and the whole world, whole world, when you see it, you know, you know that nobody there can fix it. You can't fix it. So why don't you do what the old song said? Let Jesus fix it for you. My Colossians, I'm going to stop here. In Colossians 2.20, 2, he says, Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, though living in the world, do you subject yourself to regulations. What he's saying to us is, you've died to all that stuff. I was so glad when I realized I was saved. I was so glad I remember the day after having grown up righteously, living right, going to church. And I want to say this for all young people. The worst decision I ever made in my life was when I decided I wanted to see what it was like in the wilderness. The wilderness is like this. I'm drawing to that close. It's like walking into a dense forest. And you think you just made one step. And all of a sudden, you don't have your bearings anymore. And you think... You just walked in this way, so you think, all I have to do is turn around and go back. But you don't, you don't just turn around and go back. You walk deeper and deeper into your sin. And the only way you can get back is by the grace of God. Don't do it. And, and others, others, you walked in it. And you got God's language. But you were like Lot's wife. You keep looking back, trying to get what you learned in that wilderness, in that dark place, and get it, getting it to apply in this kingdom. Not so. This is what the admonition is. Live as sons of God. Mature people of God. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Grace, what have you done? Murdered for me on that cross. Accused in absence of wrong. My sin washed away in your blood. Too much to make sense of it all. Know that your love breaks my fall. The scandal of grace, you died in my place, so oh, my soul will live. Oh, to be like you, to give all I have just to know you. Jesus, there's no one.
run beside you forever the hope in my heart said oh to be like you I give all I have just to know you Jesus there's no one beside you forever the hope in my heart said oh to know you, Jesus, there's no one beside you, forever the hope in my heart, and it's all because of you, Jesus, it's all because of you, it's all because of your love that my soul will live. And it's all because of you, Jesus. It's all because of you, Jesus. It's all because of your love. thanks this has been a wonderful day for me i hope you feel the same way just great i mean the the praise and the worship i mean christmas the christmas carol has had me almost acting like one of those holy rollers anybody here grew up holy roller raise your hand if you're not on the chain it was okay oh you need no you grew up a holy roller you too Anybody out there? Raise your hand again. Uh, wow, you're a holy roller. Anybody over here was holy? You were holy roller. And you were holy. And you were holy roller. And you were holy roller. Oh, you're a holy roller. Well, come on now. Y'all stop it. I think y'all are messing with me. Were you a holy roller? I was a holy roller. Grew up a holy roller. Boy, that shout, scream. I almost did some of that for 830. You too. You, were, you got to cause the Holy Roller charismatic. I know you. you t- <laughs> that brother called you a Holy Roller. All right, you know what? We're already late, so let those 12, 30 people wait. Um, thank you, but thank you for this. Thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you for that. I told you, I, I told you one time, I told Brian. One time I felt I started to rush the stage one time. I thought, what would happen to me? You ever see those people, those rock concerts, they rush the stage? I almost rushed the stage one day. And Brian, I almost did it today. That would be terrible if I rushed the stage and y'all had to pick me up off the steps. <laughs> let, let, me, let me read something to you. This has been a super day. Um, I got this. I have to read it. I just saw my phone there, and sometimes I'll get my phone. I want you all to pray for me about my phone because there's, there's somebody I care about a whole lot. They don't want me to touch my phone in church. Well, I won't tell you who that is. Uh, it's nobody's business. <laughs> but I'm glad I touched this phone. It says, to my dear wife, as we mark our 34th wedding anniversary, Give glory to God for his grace and faithfulness. As I go through memory lane, I remember your unconditional love for me in spite of my shortcomings and imperfections. You never wavered in demonstrating agape love, in the demonstration of agape love. You're so beautiful inside and outside, much more than even when we first met. 
I appreciate you and remain thankful to God for you. I love you forever. Your husband, Sam Olorio. Donde esta, Julie? Do it one more time. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. So wonderful. So wonderful. Thank you. I'm so glad. So glad. So if you see me touch my phone, pray for me. <laughs> it's been a good day, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we all love you. And I remember saying something to you. I thought I'd lost my mind. I said, I don't want to be in heaven without all of these, Lord. More and more I understand. I don't want to be in heaven without the other parts of the body. You never wanted just Joshua and Caleb. You wanted a whole congregation, a whole body. And I want us to look around and see what you have done for us. We're not just individuals running around here. We're a body. And here and now we're about to partake of this wafer that shows us that you, your body is responsible for all of this and even a lot more. So with our brothers and sisters online and all of us here, I want us to take the bread and lift it up because Paul tells us very clearly that we are teaching the universe. So that means that there are angelic beings out there. I don't know what they look like. I don't think I've ever seen one, and if I do see one, I want it to be in broad daylight. <laughs> but we're teaching them, Paul says. We're showing them what redeemed people look like. They wouldn't have ever known that without us. They're showing us, and we're showing them how people can come back as it were, from the abyss, as it were, from the depths of sin, and now be sons of God. People who inherit with Christ all things, all created and uncreated. That's, and we are celebrating with this wafer. Let us eat together. Let's take our cup. When Jesus shed his blood, he shed it for our redemption and for our deliverance. I used to, as a young believer, say, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. I came to a place, I can't go back. No, I don't want to go back. I'm not going back. You say, well, how can you be so sure? Because of the blood who keeps, that keeps me. It's the blood. And when we drink this, we're showing this is the blood. So we're going to drink this knowing that the blood keeps me. Now I'm going to do my part. I'm going to pray, talk to God, and yield myself to him and do whatever he tells me. But it's the blood that keeps us, that washes us, that gives us access to God now and forever. Let us drink. I want to thank while the ushers are doing what they're doing. I want to just thank everybody who's helped us. I want to thank our, our praise and worship team, Brother James, all of you. Thank you all. And thank you. Thank you all. I want to thank uh, our sister Jadida who just reads perfectly. And I want to thank her for reading so perfectly. I want to thank our Reverend Rochelle Roots for leading us and just touching places that sometimes when I, I talk with my wife, I go, well, I don't like to do it that way. 
but thank you because God uses each one of us in different ways. And I so appreciate how God does that. Thank you for facilitating. Uh, Pastor Jackson facilitated earlier. And I want to thank uh, all of our ushers and our greeters for what they do in keeping order, keep decorum. I want to say that they're not like traffic cops or anything like that. And I want them to always be sweet and kind to you. And if there, if ever any of us ushers, greeters, or any of my, member of my staff is rude to you, and you don't let me know, it's on you. Because I don't put up with that. I love, I love for, for God's people to be treated right. Really, I'm serious about it. I would rather die than hurt you. That's not, that's not hyperbole. So let's don't do that. And and now, I want to thank that. I think the media people. And, and, and the sound booth. I don't know who's directing. Who's directing today, Ruby? Uh, interpret for me. Crystal, hey, Crystal, I was thinking about you and praying for you. And tell your mother we, we, we appreciated her today. And thank you so much. And thank you, Brandon. Is that you back there? In the sound booth, thank you. And thank all of you for being here. And uh, next week, in December, invite somebody. And then when December's over... Just invite them to come to church with you. They'll hear the word of God and get saved, uh, uh, something like that. Now, and in January, I'll ask you to do it again. But let's do it for December, okay? We love all of you. Is it time for us to go? Let me ask before we go. Is there anybody who came here today and you heard something today that caused you to want to give your heart to Jesus? If you'll raise your hand, we'll, we'll, we'll take some time for you. Is there anybody here like that? Anybody else? Anybody? Anybody? All right. So let's bring somebody. And bring unsaved people. If we scare them, maybe we'll scare something out of them. So bring unsaved people. All right. We love you online. Let us lift up our hands to the Lord as we go. Repeat after me, please. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, and the Lord give you his peace. In Jesus' name, I bless you. Go with God, everybody. Go with God, everybody.